Meet the Matthewsons. They're a dynasty of dealers. It drives really well. With a love of classics. Ah, it's only condensation. Uh. In Thornton the Day, Gateway to the North York Moors, they auction over 2,000 rare vehicles every year. 42,000 are ready type, the stunning car. All walks of life, the cars fetch people together. I'm ecstatic. Head of the family, Derek. It's got to be the best job ever, isn't it? We're sort of living a dream. Trusted lieutenants, sons Paul. Not everybody's cup of tea. And Dave. There's Dad's way. And there's Dad's way. <laughs> Keeping them all in check and dealing with the punters, Sarah. Somebody could ring today with some fabulous vehicle that's been sat in a barn for 50 years. You have no clue. It's the chase, it's fine then. So you get up every morning thinking, what am I going to find today? This is a family's love affair with cars that have lived a life. Someone's cherished a car and loved it, and I think it's just great. I think it's absolutely superb. A passion that can be turned into brass. This is one of the stars of the show, 1958 Bedford CA Caravanet. It's a golden opportunity, you're not going to find many of them. Whoa! That's cool. Something's either got it or it hasn't. MDC restoration project. Beautiful. If he tells me it's beautiful, it must be beautiful. And it looks extremely complete. Brayford Corsair convertible, very rare. My dad gave me a challenge. If he could find one, he says, we'll get it and we'll do it up. There you go, look at that. For a cut and sharp motor, like that, I mean, that's yeah. brilliant, isn't it? Yes, brilliant. yeah. It's the start of another day at Matthewson's. Obviously. Because it's 2020 and staying at home seems to be the thing to do, many people, wisely or otherwise, are considering renovating a classic car. Many unmodified examples have been stored in barns. If you were to find a car in a barn, what dream car would it be? Mini. Aston Martin. Orange is my favourite colour. I'd love an orange Morris Marina from the 70s. Group B car, like a Peugeot T16 or a RS200 or a Audi Quattro or something like that. A Lotus Esprit. Because that is the car of Pretty Woman. I quite like Richard Gere to pick me up in it as well. Rusted wrecks, largely consisting of dust, are probably best left to the experts. Whereas the perfect barn find from the beginner might be one that has been properly stored and maintained. These are rare. But today, in Selby, North Yorkshire, five such cars will shortly emerge from hibernation. Mark Dawson, with help from his friend Dennis, runs a business restoring other people's classic cars. But the ones leaving today are part of a private collection, and they've been under wraps for years. So what potentially the problem here then, Mark? Um, the clutch is stuck on. With it being stored, um, we forgot to depress the clutch, and the clutch is stuck, so we need to free it off. Hopefully put it in gear and just... Uh... Look, as simple as that. <laughs> First to see daylight, a rare Crayford Ford Corsair. This very unusual convertible, one of Mark's dad's favourites. He had a 2000 GT one, a red one. I remember going on all day in the early 70s. My dad gave me a challenge. If he could find a Crayford Corsair, he says, we'll get it and we'll do it up which they did. But after Mark's dad, Alan, passed away a couple of years ago, the cars got mothballed. I just haven't got time, and it's no good having them sat in a garage, just sat around. They need to be used. This is a 1965 Humber Hawk. This one is Dennis's car. 
which he renovated here in Mark's garage. Dennis worked for my dad back in the 80s. He was the uh, panel beater uh, fitter. He's retired now. He comes down and helps out rather than sitting at home and doing nothing and vegetating, really. <laughs> Next up, another one of Dennis's. It's 1971, Triumph 2000. It's in good condition, really. It needed quite a lot of welding doing. It's taken him probably two and a half years to do. When Dennis retired from the garage about 10 years ago, he developed a dicky bag. The prescription suggested a return to some light car renovation. It's basically physiotherapy. He said you're bending, you're moving. As long as you don't do too much, it'll work with you. Yeah. Oh, you. Mark, Go on. happy to dish out the medicine. Another one that's been stood. We'll get out like that. They're making room for a 1966 Ford Zodiac. Definitely needs a good clean. Under the dust, Miami blue paintwork. Come on. Come on. Nearly. Come on. There we go. Not bad to say how long it's been stood. <laughs> how long have they been stood? It's three years. Three years. The last time it went out was my dad's funeral. Yeah. Zodiac, that was the car that he, he loved to use. Um, he just cruised along automatic and he just used to cruise along. So that was his baby really, that was the one that he really liked. The last car to be wheeled out is probably one for the more enthusiastic amateur renovator. That said, the MG Magnet from 1958 is in better shape than it looks. All the major welding's done, the basics are there for somebody that's got some time to do it. Quite a lot of time maybe but a potentially rewarding restoration. There is lots of enthusiasts out there that want to keep all these vehicles. It, it shows the history of, of the motor trade. It's history, it's got to educate the younger generations to see what it was like back in them days. Hey, hello, mate, all right? Hi, uh, Derek, you all right? Yeah. Nice to see you. Aren't we? Hi, good yeah. show. Yeah. Hey. Hey. Motley crew, isn't there? There is, just a bit, <laughs> isn't there? <laughs> Derek's nose for the valuable and unusual is already twitching. We were sort of poo-pooed them when they were yes. maybe a few years old and that, and yeah, I think most yeah. people did. The Crayford Corsair is the love it or hate it pick of the crop. You got it, there we are. Oh, one of my favourite engines. I love the V4s, because I think they're a damn good engine. They're powerful, aren't they? They're oh, fast. Yes. Yeah. yeah. They aren't wrong with them. Kent-based coach builder Crayford sliced the roof of all sorts of cars and sometimes even trucks. Mercifully, they also remembered to add some strengthening steel to the chassis. Yeah, nice old thing. What's door shuts like? There you go. Look at that. For a cut and shut motor like that, I mean, that's yeah. brilliant, isn't it? Yes, yeah. yeah. These are rare cars and they have enthusiastic owners. <laughs> this one's expected to sell for about 10 grand at the auction. Just warming up and using a bit, doesn't it? That's it, yeah. Look at that oil pressure. Full up. Yeah, nice one. Mark and Dennis have spent a lot of time and money on these cars. This collection offers peace of mind to buyers of a nervous disposition. If you look after them, you keep on top of them, keep them clean, keep them dry, they'll just keep going and going and going. Oh, I like these old Zephyrs and Zodiacs. They're great, aren't they? Yeah, top of the shop, the Zodiac, of course. This one, as you can see, has had a little bit of drama here and there and done some work, but um, someone will clean it up and make a nice car of it. She's a little bit mucky inside. She wants a real good valet out. Overdrive, good car, economical car. Cheap car to run these. Very, very good on fuel, these cars. That straight six engine is so sweet. It's just beautiful. And, and the old Umber. Hey, look at her. 2.2 Hawk, very much favoured by the government. The Humber, the Triumph and the Zodiac will all have reserves around four grand. The more demanding MG, less than two. 
all expected to generate a lot of interest at the auction. In recent times, one type of vehicle has seen something of a resurgence. I do like camping there. Do you like camping? Yeah, I like camping. Yeah. yeah. And it's I'm nearly six foot look and you're all right there, look. Straight in look. Straight in. Look at that. Camper vans like these V dubs are back in vogue, but they're not everyone's idea of a holiday. My old dad, oh boy, did he love a caravanette, but he never liked these. And I'll be perfectly truthful, nor do I. You can't get in the back door, always is a bit anti to me, you know, I'm more used to Bedford's. Trouble is, there's not many of these left. But today, a rare and very original example has tipped up ready for the auction. Lovely little thing. She's a two berth, this one. This is a 1958 Bedford CA Caravanette, complete with fold up caravan. Split screen, this one. Bedford Drivers Club badge, look. And to cap it all, I presume it's two berth. Fold up caravan. It's, um, it's a lovely outfit, super outfit. The Bedford isn't in perfect condition, but for many, it will score high on nostalgia. I'm no different than any other collector, and, and the reason people buy or are, are, are interested in specific models of cars is because they can relate to them. My dad, he would buy one of these, keep it all through the summer. We enjoyed fabulous holidays down Devon and. Uh, and Somerset and what have you. Just so, so lucky as a kid to, uh, to be able to take advantage of, of, of a vehicle like this. All down to me dad buying them. <laughs> Hang on, the seat's going boss side. <laughs> I'm, I'm winding up in the back in a minute. If it makes a bed, you see, front seat comes forward, the back of the seat goes down, and, uh, and you wind up with a two berth. This one's the short wheelbase model. But at one point, Derek's dad also owned the bigger version. When the long wheelbase uh, was introduced, the elevating roofs came to here. So they were that bit bigger, which enabled them to put two hammocks, roll up hammocks, in so, there. Uh, <laughs> so it was a four berth then, and I used to sleep in a hammock. And believe it or not, it was quite comfortable. It was all right, yeah. Little wardrobe, bits and pieces, little sink in there, little cooker. Brilliant. Ah, oh, the brilliant bit of kit. Your granddad Charlie, you see, he didn't smoke, he didn't drink, um, he just wasted it all on vehicles. No wonder I'm the same, is it? Back in the garage, Sarah's doing what she loves least, sorting random bits of memorabilia. Today, a job lot of vinyl. Shaking Stevens. What do you want to make those eyes at me for? So how does this stuff end up turning up at a motor auction? Do you know, I actually don't know. I did ask myself that when I saw it on the thing. I thought, how is this motor related, really? But it's not, is it? It's, it's just related to the olden days. So when all the old guys are here and they're reminiscing about the car that they drove and they're thinking of the good old days, they'll think, oh, yeah, I remember going into WH Smith's and buying Nat King Cole for 87p. Right. Ooh. Derek's returned and he's catching up with admin. Because he's been around the block more times than anyone can remember, enthusiasts often ask for his advice. He's either called Gavin Moffat or he's Gavin at Moffat, one or the other. Oh, is it right? Uh, Gavin has the option to buy a rare car. Now, this is a barn fine MGC Roadster. Good bit of stock. As long as it's got the documentation, because it's absolutely knackered. By the looks of these pictures, it wants shelling. Hello, Gavin, it's Derek at Matthewson's. Return your call regarding the MGC. Paul knows exactly why this car is special. Two more pistons, six cylinder, straight in cars. line, of um, three litre. People yeah, do restore I'll, I'll MGBs, of course they do. Um, They're in a lot of point, you might as well just buy a good MGB. But an MGC, different thing. 
we love these old barn finds. We uh, we sort of um, we shouldn't do because they're a lot of work, generally speaking. But they cause a lot of interest, and we seem to be be known for them. I would restore that. Yeah, would you? But you still um, got to, wouldn't you? Yeah. And I take it the car's probably around about 68, is it? So yes, it could easily do 10. Yeah, yeah. Gavin decides to buy the car, then bring it to Matthewson's for auction. We want that car. Yeah, definitely want that car. It's been in a band for 41 years. Beautiful. Hang on. 42 would have been better, yeah. but 41 no, would do. Want to look at the inside of it? Yep. Yeah, look at that. Look. look. Beautiful. If he tells me it's beautiful, it must be beautiful. Even let them look it. A few days later, the precious wreck arrives in the village. What's the plan? I just yep. asked Paul that. I don't think we've got one yet. But the plan is to get it off this young man's trailer. <laughs> and then we'll worry about it from then on. Is it free? Lead free? No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I doubt it. Oh, blimey. No. No. Uh, it, it obviously rolls free enough, does it? It doesn't. It doesn't? It doesn't roll, I don't think. No. She's locked up, is it? None of this is unusual for a car that's sat in a barn for as long as this one has. For owner Gavin, it's all about preserving history. I do get a certain buzz out of discovering a nice car and let everybody have the enjoyment of looking at something that's been stashed away. With sales of the Austin Hear Me 3000 flagging by the mid-60s, BMC bosses looked to MG at Abingdon to help update the flagship British sports car. Dropping a big engine into something like an MGB shell wasn't a bad idea on paper, but in practice, the cast iron three litre straight six was such a lump, it made the car decidedly front heavy. Persuading Dennis Healy to add his name to the new car proved impossible. And when it was launched in 1967, it was an MGC, available as a roadster and a GT. The motor and press were harsh, the production only lasted two years. The MGC was a defining moment in British sports car history. And despite their undoubted shortcomings, they are very sorted. I'm thinking it's probably not as bad as it looks, but it looks pretty bad. Yeah, she just wants some work, doesn't it, really? But it is an MGC at the end of the day, so somebody will do it, won't they? To move the MG, they'll be using the new telescopic ropey car mover machine. Dave is on driving duty only. Two weeks ago, he had a bit of an injury. That one's working all right. That one's not working very well. Did you say I'm your favourite team member? Yeah, I am. Oh, yeah, thanks. Uh, I trapped it last night, working late uh, in the dark on the trailer. Between the hospital and the car park, yeah. Three lorries stopped and said, where do you want to go, mate? The support I, I've had from all of them, from the, from the friends and family, work colleagues in the office and all the rest of it, has been non-existent, really. You're so melodramatic, David. <laughs> Method one, a hugely powerful machine, plus a bit of old rope. Yeah. Them straps off that side. She's too tight, Jacko. The MGC, somewhat reluctant. We're going to snap that rope. It's, it's ever, so, ever so tight. Method two, the rusty chain. Which, with a bit of encouragement, does get the car rolling, even if it's only one wheel. Good man. It looks to have come off in one piece. No, uh, no breakages, which is always good. As for Dave, the thumb's on the mend. Not too bad. It's still fairly swollen, though. But there's been a worrying development. And then I done me back in over a weekend, so just a drain on the NHS at the moment. for the impressive collection of much-loved classics that Derek picked up from Selby. 
Normally there would be swarms of punters converging on Thornton Dale. <laughs> Not today. The March 2020 auction was a bit different. Two days before, a national lockdown is announced, and the wheels have come off. There's not even enough time to get the internet sorted for this one, so with just a handful of pre-auction bids and some mobile phones, the sale of the Selby 5 goes ahead. Derek's cobbled together a press statement. Mark III Zodiac that made 5,400. That was a nice bonny car, I remember. Um, there was a Triumph 2000, which I didn't rate particularly highly, really, but it was sensibly priced and sensibly reserved. Made 2,950. Uh, there was a lovely old 1965 Humber Hawk, which sold for 3,900, which was about bang on its value. Uh, and a car that, again, I, I've got a real soft spot for. I, I actually love these ZA and ZB magnets, which was in a poorish condition appearance-wise, but it was actually a very, very solid car. And that sold for 2,000 pounds. That car, in mint condition, would do eight and a half, ten and a half thousand. So there was plenty of room in that for someone. Uh, that was a good deal. But the main car of the, of the show, of that group of cars, in my opinion, was the Corsair Crayford convertible. A bit odd, but um, it achieved eight, eight and a half thousand, which was about bang on the reserve. So I was quite pleased with that. It's been the strangest auction in Matthewson's history. But Derek's focused on the future. The bit that's worrying me is that when we announce our first live auction, I don't know where or how we're going to hold it, because I, I, I sort of almost know personally how that's 5,000 people want to come. You know, I'm one of them people that everyone's welcome, and that's, so I don't know where we're going to hold it. Wait and see. Will that do, John? That's fine. At the garage, Derek's arranged a private viewing. What, do you drive up? No, I took the train. Oh, I, did you? I was, I was going to get a taxi from Malton, but there was a bus right at, uh, a coach oh. right outside. So oh, that was I, Andy then. Norfolk-based Martin yeah. Collins is a member of the Retro Caravan Club. He's been dispatched by his wife. I had my orders to come over. <laughs> to view the 1958 Bedford campervan. I've known it a long time, only at shows, bits and pieces. Oh, OK. Yeah. She's due for a bit of paintwork now, as you can see. But she's really honest. It's a nice colour combo, isn't it? It always looked a nice outfit, you know, when it was all polished up and cleaned up and looking nice on the field. Martin and his wife, Laurie, already own this classic combo. A 67 Cheltenham Springbok paired to an S-type Jack. She wanted a smaller van which she could take away to herself to sort of fairs and just generally go out onto the coast because she's retired. I did pull it out of the shed when we picked it up, but there's a carburetor fault. Do you no think I'd have to trailer it away? Oh, definitely, without a doubt. Derek has perfected his laissez-faire method of salesmanship over many years. She's just you for some recommissioning, really, isn't she? Yeah. It's quite clean underneath, isn't it? It's not bad, yeah, it's OK. Did you take it for a spin or did you just...? No, just yeah. put it up straight on the lorry. OK. Did you pull it on the lorry? Or yeah, no? yeah, no, it drove on nicely. Did it. But it was popping and banging a bit. Yeah. Uh, it doesn't take long for them, does it, to um, sort of fluff up a bit. No. Uh, but no problem, no. You know, I'm not trying to sell it to you because you do what you like, but yeah, yeah, it's a no. golden opportunity. You're not going to find many of them. You won't see another one. You probably won't. No. Well, I hope you haven't wasted your time. I hope you feel you. No, no, that's OK. I've anyway. followed instructions. Followed instructions um... Absolutely, mate. Yeah, yeah. He's now got to go and report back. But the trouble is, of course, you don't know what he's going to report back to you. So uh, what I really do ought to do, I really ought to have pushed him for a, for a phone number and I should be reporting back to the Commander-in-Chief for him because, um, you know, I did sense that he don't really want to mow the caravan himself, but she does. But even if it's a no from Norfolk, the Bedford is likely to be snapped up by some other happy campers. There's going to be some buyers here. There's going to be some local buyers that know the vehicle. That and the, and the fold-up caravan, which is a lovely bit of kit on its own, is most certainly worth 8,000 quid. In the office, Joe and Sarah have been sent details of an unusual vehicle needing a valuation. That is a big, big cow. cow. It's a VW Beetle with a larger-than-life-size Argentinian cow sitting on it. So. Mm. Interesting. It's a vegan message, isn't it? 
Derek's pretty pro vegan, isn't he? Yeah. He never has a sausage roll or a pork pie or a ham sandwich, does he? Or oh, cheese. <laughs> I don't think Derek we could know what a plant-based food was. He did cook himself some peas the other week, didn't he? He did. He was so pleased with himself. He just said, you just put me in a pan with some water, don't you? Outside, Derek is feeling optimistic about the 1969 MGC. It looks extremely complete. He's now enjoying some fresh air after being stuck in a barn for 40 years. Completely shot, body's had it, finished. You do not repair this vehicle, you reshell it. And there is the perfect MGC donor car. I think a shell is less than 10 grand, everything's there. Interior's totally correct, right engine, etc. Three litre twin SU carbs, as you can see. Just burbles along, beautiful engine. Uh, and this will go back on the road as a beautiful MGC but it will be in an MGB body shell that's somewhere or other at the moment. But hold on, there's dissent in the ranks. Paul has spent many years studying the MGC's bonnet bulge and reading up on the clearance required for the front SU carburetor. But I was just saying, I mean, it's such a, a no-brainer, isn't it? It's going to be reshelled. It's so simple, isn't it? You say that, but they're so different from a B, aren't they? In what way? Oh, listen in. You can't take that out of there and put it into a B. What, what, why is that then? Because all the side? chassis rails are different. Are they? Front cross members different, chassis are sure? rails are different, yeah. Oh God. Is that right? Yeah. Derry getting his facts wrong? Sure not. To settle the score, they've invited to the garage one of the few people in the country who actually owns one. The car I'm driving today is an MGC GT. It's 1969 registered, so just past its 50 years birthday this year. The previous owner had, uh, had the car for 35 years, so uh, it was obviously a, a treasured uh, part of his collection. Ian Brown worked in development for Ford and also F1 teams Stuart GP and BAR Honda. But MGs have been a lifelong obsession. I was lucky enough the first day I passed my test, I drove an MGB GT, and as a consequence of that, uh, I've always had an affinity with them. Contrary to press reports when it was launched, Ian has no problem with the handling. It drives extremely well and um, just to be able to get around the country lanes just that little bit faster is uh, a bit more exciting. You're always engaged when you drive a car like that. You know you've been driving it and you enjoy it. It's really quite a, a special car. There's a lot of work to be done on that. I mean, just looking at the, the bodywork around the engine, it, it's clearly got um, some potential. Original seats, the frames might be good, and as I've reupholstered mine, you could probably do exactly the same with those. Oh, good grief. There's a bit of an oily mess in there as well. But that didn't come as standard. <laughs> if you look down here, the bodywork's coming away. I mean, it, it gives you all the suggestion that there's, there's very little that you could start to recover from the body shell itself. One that's had a lot of work done on it, perfect body work, running sweetly and everything, you can see them now being advertised for 30, 35,000 pounds. The idea of getting this car to that level, unless you are completely dedicated, I, I just can't see it. But no doubt somebody will prove me wrong. Now then, Ian, I'm Derek. Hello. Nice to meet you. And you. Thanks for coming. Now, sir. Uh... What do you reckon to our little gem then? <laughs> Lovely, isn't it? I was lost for words. Were you? First things first, Paul versus Derek. Who was right? Well, I said shell it, but yes. front end's different, isn't it? Uh, it is, but they you can you can buy a replacement. I, th I thought you, you could. You can get the whole lot. Yeah. The, basically on the, the C, because the bigger engine, yeah. that bulkhead goes forward. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, I, there I, you can I, get all the bits. I'm sure you could. Family unity preserved. They were both right. The shell is different to a B, but like everything MG, easy enough to replace. 
it's going to be an interesting old job, isn't it? It is, yeah. And I think it will be uh, well received and I think it will sell pretty well. Do you? i would be really interested to see because I, I sort of had a stamp to oh, get 300 quid for it, but I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Derek and owner Gavin were thinking more along the lines of 8,000. Well, I'd love to be proved wrong. I hope you are. <laughs> uh, I hope I'm proved right. Auction day, pre-COVID, with people. Quite a lot of them, as it turns out. One of the star attractions, the 1958 Bedford CA Caravan Met, with its porthole windows and a folding caravan in tow. I've seen it at all the shows for the last few years. It normally wins prizes. I'll give you engine end. <laughs> also available, a heady mix of memorabilia. Yeah, so this is a very rare Michelin map of Great Britain. It's late 80s. Looks a little bit crumpled and rusted, but happy with that. In attendance today... That looks nice, doesn't it? Yeah. Seasoned renovators Johnny May and Rich Piercy. What are we buying, Johnny? Speedboat. Speedboat. <laughs> Stateside classics. This is 1957 Chevy and desirable sports cars. 1979 Lotus Eclat. Normally their thing, but today... Is that a CA? What's that? Is that a CA Darmobile? It's all about the ultra-traditional Bedford. Whoa! That's cool. That is cool. That is cool. So, Rich, just let me get this right, then. You just walk past the Mustang and you're now looking at the dorm. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> there's, there's no... Uh, you can't explain these things, You can can't you? explain it. It's just something's either got it or it hasn't. Um, Mustangs, lovely cars, Dormobiles. Fit all the family in it. Probably sell ice creams out the back of it. Yeah. It's stylish. Yeah. We're sold. Sold. Done. <laughs> this is one of the stars of the show, 1958 Bedford CA Caravanet. Nice early, split screen, short wheelbase. Best you'll ever find. Uh, start me on it, 6,000 I've got, 6,000 there, 6,000, 250, 65, 7,000, 7,000, 250, 7,250 over here, 75, 7,005, you're out T, 75, 750, 7,750, 8,000 on sale and selling, 8,000, 250, 8,250 and away, 8,250 over here and on sale and going, 8,5, 8,750 I've got, 8,750, 8,9, 9,001, 9,001, 92, 3, 9,004, 95, 9005, 6 I've got, 96, 9006 standing, 97, 98, 980 he says, 10,000 he says, 10,000, 10,001, 10,002, 10,002, 103, 10,003, it's only money, don't worry about it, 10,003, 104, 5, 10,005, 106, 107, 10,700, 10,008, 10, 9, 11, 11, 1. Good, I'm pleased for you. Thank you very much. 11, 1. Well done. Thank you very much. Well done. I'm pleased you got that. Excellent. Bit of a battle on, I know that. Yeah, 11,000. Determined bidder Bill Kitchen from Devon bags the Bedford. You know, I mean, you always get a bit carried away at an auction, don't you, when you, you're buying and it'll go a little bit more. Uh, but go and find another one, isn't it? That's so I say, yeah. So you can find another one, well, but there ain't no more. So that's about it. Yeah, especially the portal. Yeah, it's a, it's a rare thing. Are you going to use it as a camper at any point? <laughs> I can't see my wife wanting to get in there, but uh, uh, yeah, I probably will myself, you know. Following Derek's successful day out in Selby, how are mate? All right? Hi, Derek. You all right? Yeah. Where he collected five British classics. Oh, one of my favourite engines. One car stood out as a slightly more ambitious project. The MG Magnet from 1958. All the major welding's done. The basics are there for somebody that's got some time to do it. And sure enough, the perfect person came along. Retired RAF engineer John Beaumont from Gainsborough. 
I bought the MG Magnet because I needed something to do. It's a car I used to own, but I bought one in 1966. I mean, I had it about two years until it fell apart. Well, actually, it blew up. This car may have had some work done to it, but it still wasn't one for the faint-hearted. I'd actually seen better cars in the scrapyard, but I then decided that uh, what have I got to lose? So I went and bought it. John has spent the last six months first dismantling and then renovating the car. Fuel tank out, rear windscreen, so I could clean it up. That's easy to do the doors in the workshop. I hadn't got an instrument panel, that's all in bits. Bonnet off, wings and inner wing off. All the brakes have got to be done. All that is rubbed down, undercoat, top coats. And that's all there is to it. Plus the small matter of putting this lot back together again. You just learn it, you read about it, you do it. Sometimes you're wrong, most of the time you're right. But it's not difficult. From one MG to another, the rare three litre straight six MGC finally had its day at the auction. It might be eight years younger than the Magnet, but its condition... It is quite extreme. ...is striking fear into the hearts of even the bravest of punters. It's too much for me. Quite a bit of rust. Upholstery requires a bit. Chrome work. Knackered. For this car to sell, the right person had to be at the auction. The owner was looking for eight grand. Derek tried again the following month. MGC, restoration project, valuable bit of kit when it's done. Lot number 45, Barn Fine MGC. Start me where, in your hands. Start me where you want to be. Submit the best bit today. Whereabouts, come on, where? Whereabouts, three and a half, 3,500, three five, I'm submitting, 3,500. Is the four anywhere? I'm going to submit provisionally, 3,500, three five. This time, nowhere near enough. But only Gavin has a plan. I'll take it out and we'll get it restored and have some fun with it, probably. It could be that this is the last one that's going to be a barn find in the UK. It's exciting because when it sells, eventually it'll be a 30 to 40,000 pound motor car. But that plan changed. Gavin gave eBay a whirl. The right buyer was online and the MGC went for just under seven grand. Step forward, the bravest man in Shropshire. Builder, plumber, ex-motor engineer, and one-time vehicle paint sprayer, Barry Druce, has accepted the challenge of resuscitating the MGC. Are you an MG man? I've had one before. The wife had one before we got together. They've always been missed and they've always been talked about, so now we've got this one. It does look as though it's seen better days. It definitely has, yes. <laughs> Is it not dead? No, no, no. She'll go again. She'll definitely go again. But not this week? Not this week, no. Barry isn't planning on buying a new shell for the car. So there might be just a bit of welding ahead. Oh, a great hunk of metal which is in a poor state. You accept that it's in a poor state? Oh, I do, yes. The engine will be sent off for a rebuild, but the rest of the magic should happen in this workshop. Gonna need two new front wings, rear panels. The door's been messed around with at some stage. It's not the right door. That piece has been cut out and put in. Obviously seals, quarters, driver's side floor. But by the time you've replaced quite a lot of panels, what are you actually left with? Very good question. I mean, the chassis is in very good condition. No holes, no rot. You can obviously see past all this. Well, oh, some definitely, people yeah. Some people couldn't. 
Yes, no, definitely. I, I suppose because of obviously working before in the motor industry, you see cars come in that have smashed up and you just look at it and you go, okay, fair enough. A few weeks later, they're back on the road and being sent out the door again. So everything's feasible. Why not go out and buy a car that you could just get in and drive? Because you don't have the enjoyment of saying, I've repaired that. I've put that back on the road. I've saved it. And there would be no surprises. Apparently there's a few years of cobwebs and dirt and grime and presumably rodents. You could say that, yes. I think at some stage there was actually a squirrel living in the car, as you can tell. Yeah. Isn't that a monkey nut? It is, yes. Any monkeys? No, no monkeys. Definitely no monkeys were involved. Also on the trailer from the Selby collection. Oh, I like these old Zephyrs and Zodiacs. They're great, aren't they? Yeah, top of the shop, the Zodiac vehicles. This one was dispatched to Norfolk. Over we go. To a bit of an unusual workshop. My main job is with aircraft, airframes and refinishing and that sort of thing. Murray Flint is the new owner of the 1966 Ford Zodiac. And it's not the only classic he's renovating. Here is my 1946 Luscombe, built in Dallas, Texas. Uh, Two-seat, high-wing monoplane, powered by a Continental 65 horsepower engine. The wings are fabric-covered. Murray is a pilot himself. Only high-quality work is rewarded with a license to fly. It gives you a good discipline when approaching restoration, that things must be done right. There are no half measures, it has to be right. So the chances of the Zodiac just getting a light polish were almost nil. It's something I fancied owning once again, as the last time I owned one must be 40 years ago now. It's an automatic box and there was an awful lot of slippage, so we removed that and had it rebuilt. Then the engine was starting to chuff like Thomas the Tank engine, so on, on that point we thought, right, we've got to do the engine. And by doing it, that means another rebuild. All the ancillaries and everything's going to be stripped off, all the brake lines, the steering, the suspension. So I think the best thing to do is rebuild each, every component where it needs, and then we should end up with a nice, reliable, safe car. Murray will do most of the work himself, with help from his son, James. A detailed renovation like this could cost 30 grand, but he expects to bring it in for half that amount. It should be a sound investment, not that I'm going to sell it, because um, my son loves it, so I've now lost my car. I've always wanted to drive something that big, like, you know, the American style with the rear lights and what have you. You know, it just, it's just a cool cruiser. You stick on ZZ Top and away you go. It's the whole look of the thing, you know, and the styling, and, and all of a sudden, you're back to being 20 years old again. That smell rolls back the years. 